Jack Spade back here with you, High Noon Leatherworks, for another leather adventure. And today, we're going to continue the hunting knife sheath. And I'll show you what I finished up after the last video with the dragon scales. And we'll move on and put some dye on today. And you'll see how that really makes those scales pop. So come on in. Let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is um, put my protective gloves on. Again, I've talked about this before, but this uh, dye stains your skin and uh, it just has to wear off. So I've got a new. Um, Fibings leather dye. It's medium brown is the color. And I'm looking for just a piece of uh, sandpaper or a piece of emery cloth off here that I'm going to use. And then I need one of my plastic Dollar Tree plastic dishes that I use to put my dye in. And the reason I needed a piece of sandpaper is I'm going to dye the spacer today also. And the spacer is just like the rest of the leather. It's got a rough side and it's got a smooth side, a finished side. So I need this to be a little rough on the smooth side also because I'm going to glue this with some contact cement uh, in between the front and the back as my spacer. So before I dye it, I'm just going to take a little bit of emery cloth and you can use sandpaper. And all I'm doing is roughing that smooth edge up just a little bit. So it gives my contact cement that I put on there after I dye it and it dries, it gives my contact cement something to bite to. The other side's not a problem at all because it's got, it's rough, it's got everything on that to bite to. So all I did was take that smooth finish off of it, didn't make it super rough. But I'll take my new medium brown, set my box here so that I know I need to order some more. Shake it up real good. Again, it's Fibings medium brown. And I have been buying this online at Amazon. And it does have a foil but then it also has once you pull that foil off it has a protective thin little piece of plastic, stretchy plastic over that. So you got to cut it out. You can see why you want to make sure you wear gloves. No matter how careful you are, you seem to always get that stuff on you. I'll pour some of that into that plastic cup. Um, You remember I got to do the front and the back of each piece. So I always put my lid back on so in case I knock that over I don't want to make a huge mess. So I'll do my spacer first. Put my dauber in there. And 
and again you're not going to see the front and the back of this or the top and the bottom I guess you'd say but I'm going to dye it anyway because I'll probably end up sanding this smooth on the edge once I get it stitched so I want to make sure that it is dyed just in case some of that sanding would get into that um, and then you'd have to re-dye it or touch it up and I'd rather not do that I don't have to so I'll do both sides two coats of the medium brown then I'll do the edges and again this isn't a very thick it's only a quarter inch wide at its widest point so as it sucks that dye in it's really getting in there penetrating that leather so I'll rotate it a couple of times to make sure I didn't miss any spots that looks coated very good now we'll go over to the front of the sheath and I'll do the front first and you'll notice one thing when you start dyeing this uh, leather that you've put these scales on as you move your dauber back and forth it pulls because it's kind of a 3d effect and it's got a lip on the bottom of the scale it pulls that dye right out of your dauber and it sucks it right down into those low spots and what that does is it gives it even more of a 3d effect and it makes where that dye goes underneath the little lip under at the bottom of each scale what it does is it puffs it up so it soaks that dye in underneath that scale and puffs that scale up and it makes it even look more 3D like and you can see that right there in the light you can see how it puffed those up and made it even more textured or 3D so just by running that dauber over it it really puts that dye underneath those scales I'll do the edges and then I'll do the back and this is going to be the inside so it's not as critical but I still like to make sure it's good and coated and covered because again just like the spacer I'll probably end up sanding that smooth on that edge when I'm done putting this together and it looks like it looks like one coat of that medium brown is going to be perfect so I'll set that aside I'm not going to give that a second coat I'll take I probably ought to put a little more dye in my container now remember I do not put the dye that's unused in that container that I'm daubing out of back in my bottle I do not want to contaminate the rest of my dot rest of my dye in my bottle another reason why you want to wear gloves um, with dust and dirt maybe some of the wool off the dauber so that's another reason why I'm putting uh, my dye into a separate container or a second container instead of using directly out of the bottle 
Now, again, I'm going to go back and forth and let that die get underneath those scales and puff those up, help it give it that 3D look. And it really pulls that dye down into those crevices and those cracks. And as it does, again, just like I said on the front, as it pulls it down in there, it puffs that up and makes it even more 3D looking. And that's what makes these scales look so good. Not only the punch that you're using or the cutter that you're using, but the depth that you put those punches in and then the die. And you can see I put scales all the way down even though this is going to be folded over for a belt loop. I wanted that to look like it wasn't just stamped in there, but it was part of the leather itself. And then I'll do the edges. Looks like I'm going to need a little more dye for the back because it'll soak up quite a bit. So I'll put a little more of my medium brown in that container. I always clean the lip of my container off after I get done pouring it also. This helps keep my workspace clean and my bottles clean. So I'll go ahead and dye the inside of the back piece. see ended up using everything in the container which is good that's nice when that ends up that way because I don't like to waste it but I don't want to put it back in my bottle and contaminate any of my fresh dye that's in my bottles all right there's the back piece and you can see what that dye does to that leather it's just like getting it wet with water so it does make it pretty pliable so there's the back piece the front piece and you can see those scales are still puffed up and they'll stay that way as long as you don't put any weight or anything on them and then there's the spacer. So there's the knife, hunting knife sheath with the dragon scales on it. Uh, the medium brown dye has been put on it. You saw how those dragon scales puffed up and gave it almost a 3D look to them. Um, again, as long as you don't put any weight on that while it's wet, it'll dry that way. So it'll kind of have that neat texture to it when it's finished and uh, come on back next video 
and we'll be moving on to the next steps of putting this together. So we'll get all these pieces coming together to uh, start wrapping up this project. So thanks for coming, thanks for watching, and as I always say, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.